Hi, and welcome to part two of my painting demonstration. We're going to get back into the shadows that we've been working on here, trying to make sure that we look at our reference photo, but also realize that in a photo, the shadows are always going to be darker and have less interest in them than they do in real life. So I'm going to be using my imagination and bringing up interest in the shadows. Um, in general, there are some things that you have to change when you use a photo reference. That's one of them. And also just in general, I put my photos into Photoshop first and adjust the color so it looks more natural before I start painting. So here I'm laying in all the rocks, going back and forth with dark, medium, and, and light tones of gray, just to get the impression of rocks and rubble along the shore. Now I'm working on the foreground rocks. As you can see, I, I do this often in acrylics. Like I said, you do have about a five seconds that you can work with the paint you've, you've placed down. So sometimes I'll place a color that's too dark and I can come in with some white or a different color and mix it right on the canvas, but you only have about five seconds to do that and then it's going to start gumming up and make a mess. So here I'm just trying to work up the under layers of these foreground rocks, make them uh, find my light areas and my dark areas, constantly looking at the reference photo, keep putting in some warm colors, some cool tones, you're always going to have this whole area of rocks is still in shadow. It's not as light as the back bank is. So it's still in shadow and as I work this through it's I kind of work it down a little bit darker as I go. But you always want to compare. You want to compare is it in my reference photo is this area lighter or darker than the area around it. And the shadow behind it right here is darker and the rocks are lighter but you still in order whenever you want to show sunlight a sunlight area your contrast is going to be higher your lights are going to be lighter your darks are going to be darker and when you get into shadowed areas you can still have as much chroma the colors can be as vivid but your contrast is not as extreme so your lights are dimmer and your darks are a little bit lighter so that's how, how you can see the sunlight you want to have higher contrast in the sunlit areas and lower contrast in the shaded areas here I'm working on the reflections a little bit more in acrylic paint when I'm putting in the reflections what I'll do is I'll lay down a color and then I will come back in rinse my brush real well but keep it wet and I'll, I can I have a few seconds there to use just pure water and soften the edges of those reflections and as you can see you just pull the reflection color straight down soften all the edges and then I came back in with some blue which is the sky actually reflecting off of the water and I you draw the blue across the reflections and that gives you the feeling of the water um, just from those reflections and those little bits and you have to be careful not to go overboard with that but that gives the feeling that okay I understand this is water and these are rocks that are in the water I'm coming back and adding in some branches some tree trunks I'm using my liner brush now Okay, and here what I've done is taken a, a wash of thalo blue, which is a very transparent bright blue color, and I put just used it with a lot of water in it and my big brush, and I just washed that over the whole reflection area to just to subtly um, combine all those colors, unify all those colors, bring them a little bit bluer and a little bit duller which makes them look more like reflections in water. <clears throat> you can do that in you know any area that you want to unify a little bit is come in with a wash. Of course this is acrylic so all those colors were dry underneath 
and um, come back with a very thinned out little bit of pigment and a lot of water and just wash it over the top. Here I'm using the technique of coming back in with water after I've laid down the color using my thumb and my brush and just softening all those edges in the water. I, I don't like any hard edges in my reflection area because that's water so it's, you wouldn't see the edges of the brush strokes. I'm using my liner brush to add some more details, some dark darks here and there, adding a few more dark tree branches with that liner brush. It's hard to see with my hand in the way there, but I just make a very sharp edge to the liner brush by brushing it back and forth in my palette in the paint, get lots of paint on it, and then just flick it upwards on the edge to give a nice thin, thin branch and twiggy kind of effect. And then I come back in over the top of that and add my foliage back in. <clears throat> and as you can see, I'm continuing whenever I add a new color up there in that foliage, I'm coming down below into the reflections to add that same color in the reflections. Adding back in my darks, just working back and forth, putting the darks back in and then taking the darks the lights back in and just working it back and forth much like that foliage would be growing on the bank of the tree you'll have the, the back of the bush and the middle of the bush and the front of the bush and I just like to lay them all in that way okay coming back in with some more of my oranges and my fall colors just checking back and forth with my reference photo finding a new color I haven't added yet and adding it back in what I really love about painting is color. Here you notice I'm putting these moss on the rocks and also these some of the front bushes that are a little more bright green. And then I'll come back in on this bush a little bit later. You see how I've made it kind of a round blob. I'll come back in with some darker colors in a moment and put the dark back underneath it, the shadows underneath the bush to there I've put some shadows back underneath the bush and behind the bush and then I'll come back in with some lighter colors again to have a few branches coming forward over the darks. I'm adding a little bit of that gray blue um, pretty much the same color as the sky. You'll also often get the sky reflected on leaves here and there and it also unifies the colors in the painting. I've got the blue in my sky, the blue in the river, and you see I've added some of the blue on the foreground rocks. Again, these are all reflections of the sky and, and bring that the whole painting to feel like it's unified a little bit more. Now I'm refining that very edge. I want to see that how that those front uh, bank of trees is really in front of that back bank of trees so we're finding that edge and darkening that edge adding in more reflections checking those reflections now I'm going to work for a while on these reflections on the right hand side um, just looking above to what's in the tree line and then putting similar colors down below usually in reflections there's going to be less contrast the lights are going to be darker, the darks lighter, and generally they're, it's a little bluer looking, a little more grayed out. So I'm having to mix these colors anew because I didn't lay them in when I was putting in that bank of trees. Putting in my darks, and you can see how the reflections are just a mirror image of what goes on above. And then laid down in straight vertical brush strokes. So here I'm adding more, a little more detail again on those edge of the uh, of the trees, lightening up that background bank of trees, so that it's. Now I'm putting in the light hitting that background bank of trees, putting in we 
call those sky holes, but in this case it's tree holes, always working with the background and the foreground. And when I have a bank of trees, like that foreground, you can see I took the color of the background trees and dotted it in along the edge where the foliage is kind of loose and you can see the background trees coming through. That's called negative painting, painting the negative spaces. Now I'm realizing that the sky is too dark, it's too, too chromatic for me. I wanted to make it lighter. You'll find, especially with, uh, with skies, they're almost always lighter along the horizon line and get a little bit darker as you go up. I was laying in some white and then used a paper towel and, and pulled some of it back out just to give a feeling of trees and and uh, wispy clouds, not trees, but wispy clouds in the sky. So here I'm redefining the edge of the shoreline a little bit more, make it look more like a shoreline, putting a few rocks right out in the middle of the reflections, and adding some white, a very light blue. And here I add that white, but then I come back and I take some water and I soften the edges of that. I don't want it to look like a white stark line across there. Just look like the winds rippling the water a little bit. Just spending some time going back in and adding a few more values and dark areas, adjusting the values a little bit. Now I'm adjusting the uh, reflection of that background trees that I had lightened up so I have to lighten up the reflection as well defining the edges wiping some off brushing some out off and putting color back in until it feels right to me so then I'll come around and define the edges of these foreground rocks a little bit more taking my light putting it on the edges. And really this is just a process of looking at my reference photo, seeing a color that I haven't used before, not really thinking about what I'm painting, or now I'm painting moss, or now I'm painting a rock, but just looking for the shapes of color and placing them where I see them in the reference photo. Always, you know, especially with a bank of rocks like this, you don't have to slavishly follow exactly what the reference photo says. Sometimes I'll change it so that it leads the eye better in the painting or has a more interesting effect. Simplify it. These I actually simplified a little bit because they're right in the foreground, but I don't want them to catch your eye. I just, I want them to give you a, a feeling of I'm standing here on these rocks and I'm looking across this beautiful vista but I don't want it to have a lot of detail because that will catch your eye and, and your eye will focus right on those rocks and they're not the main part. You can see here I decided the rocks needed to have a come in a little bit more there, have more interesting shape so I added more ref reflections back down in and now extended the reflections down into the rock to reshape that rock shape. And just added a few adding a few more darks here. Just about done with this painting. Just looking for areas just I want them to read as rocks, but I don't want them to have too much detail. A few more lights and a few more darks. Add my finishing touches in the, of some more white in the uh, river area, and the water area, which will draw your eye a little more. A little more dark, dark against the shore. And then I sign it. And that's pretty much the finished painting. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Here's some information that you can find this painting and some of my other paintings and thanks for joining me.